Hi, welcome to SEW Your Drive, Driving the World. Today we have with us Jared Scott, and we're going to talk about replacing SEW and non-SEW gear motors. How are you today, Jared? I'm doing great, Cully. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to hear. So why don't we start off with an SEW gear motor? Let's say you have one out in the field, and you either want to send it in for repairs, or unfortunately it fails in service. How would you go about getting a new SEW gear motor? Great question, and a very typical situation that occurs out in the field. So we have in front of us an example. It's a Eurodrive gear motor. Let's just say that this was the one that you needed to get replaced. Okay. So there's a couple of key things that you need to think about. The lifeblood of anything SCW is the SO number. And the SO number is found on our nameplates. So if you look at this particular unit here, it's got an SO number on the nameplate that's on the motor. And there's also, because of the size of this gearbox being smaller, it has a sticker that has the information for the reducer. It has an SO number as well. The bigger gearboxes have a nameplate. So okay. Typically, you're going to see two nameplates on all of our gear motor product. It's really important that you go and get the information off of both nameplates because it could be maybe there was a motor swap or something happened and they just grabbed another motor off of their spare parts shelf and put it on there. So always get the SO number, which is going to start with like 87 dot or some of the older nameplates would be three digits like 870, 850, different things like that. You may find gearboxes from Germany with 01 and then a decimal point. Regardless, take a good picture of the nameplate if you can. I mean, there are some cases where it's in a really harsh environment and the nameplate has a lot of stuff on it that makes it hard to read. But get the SO number, take pictures. That's important because we need to see what you actually have versus the nameplate. There are instances where the nameplate doesn't match up with what is actually there. Really? It happens, yeah. Well, I guess that's also useful to have two nameplates so you can compare both of the information. And I'm guessing the reducer would have the original per se nameplate, and this would give you what it was originally ordered with. And then you can compare it to any changes that have happened in the past. That's right. That's right. And it may not even be anything wrong. It could have just been, you know, the customer wanted to upgrade the motor. They wanted like some additional protection or maybe they wanted to have a connector or something. So every time a change is made, a new nameplate is supposed to be added. But this could have fallen through the cracks or the end user didn't do their due diligence. So yeah, there's a lot to take in. That's why we just say, hey, give us all the information that you can. Give us a picture of both of the nameplates, even a picture of the, the entire unit. Um, it's, it's good to get as much information as we can, especially maybe you're having an issue. We need to see, well, where's this unit at? Could it be close to a heat source? Is it outdoors, indoors? Is there something getting sprayed on it? You know, just a lot of things to, to keep in mind with that. Um, mounting positions are really important too, um, because you can say the nameplate says, hey, it's, it's M1. This gearbox is mounted at M1. Right. We recommend, we actually, our service staff has these blocks. You don't have to use one of these. Just have something that you can set onto the unit. Obviously, gravity's doing its job. It's keeping it there. If you send us a picture of that, we know, oh, that unit's mounted at M1. But let's say this unit was mounted vertically. In order for you to set something on it, you might be setting it on the end there. So when you take the picture, this is a magnetic, so we know, oh, that unit's mounted vertical, but the nameplate says M1. Something's not right here. And that could be leading to the issues that they're having exactly, in the field. Exactly, exactly. And so. we've identified the actual problem instead of just replacing another unit that's going to be M1 per se. That's right. So, yeah, get the SO number, take pictures of the nameplates, take a picture of the entire unit. Give us as much information as possible. That guarantees that we will get you exactly what you need to solve your problem. So with an SEW unit, it's just kind of the environment and how it's mounted and an SO number, and they're pretty much ready to rock and roll? That's it. Okay, so it looks like we got the easy one out of the way. So now let's say we're talking about a non-SEW gear motor. Mm -hmm. What kind of information would be needed to successfully cross that over to an SEW gear motor? Yeah, you're going to need a little bit more information. Okay. Um, it, it's along the same premise of give us as much as you can, but there's some critical pieces of information that we need. Obviously, we need a picture of the entire unit. Um, and then again, try to get the orientation there. But there's some specific things we need, like where's the, uh, where's the shaft located at? Um, we can see that from a picture, but it's good if you can measure the shaft. Now, sometimes the unit is actually mounted into some piece of equipment like a conveyor. It can be a little difficult to measure it, but... I'm sure you can figure it out if you're if you're down there in there and things aren't working. 
measure it with a pair of calipers. Give us kind of a ballpark because everybody everybody kind of has a, a standard set of dimensions. So it's not going to be like some crazy 0. .00125 tolerance. It's going to be like one inch or one and a half inches or 50 millimeters, for example. So you want to get the shaft. You want to see uh, what's the voltage of the motor. Okay. So that's another good thing. Um, you know, and again, pretty much everybody out there has nameplates. So take pictures of their nameplates. That's going to help us to be able to see what we have to cross over with an SCW product. Right. So hopefully their nameplate has some information on it. And I mean, we'd be looking for, I mean, possibly a speed or a ratio sure, yeah, or a shaft style. I mean, mm -hmm. it would be helpful. I mean, it'd be hard to tell a hollow shaft from a torque lock shaft or a, or a shrink dish shaft from a mm -hmm. picture. So that information I'm assuming would be helpful as well. Very helpful. And uh, the, the speed is, is also critical because most motors are going to be four poles, so we know what the input speed is going to be, right? Like seventeen fifty, but the output speed is what's critical because then we can just do simple math and we're like, oh, okay, we know what the ratio is. So uh, we we want to know what the speed of the output is. That would be great. And with the dimensions, I'm assuming that an out uh, SEW contact could supply dimensions to make sure that they're comparable. Yes. And then I guess it kind of falls on the customer to fit it into their situation, either with a small adapter plate or some kind of configuration like that? Absolutely. And, you know, just as a, as a, a side point, we really specialize in making sure that the product is as drop-in replacement as possible. So that way, uh, the end user, the customer, it's up to them. But if as much as they want to have us involved, we can help them out with drawings and even for some of the bigger units, like you get into the IG arena then we can, we can fab out transition plates and plates that go up to bring the unit up to the proper high, things like that. So there's, there's really no limitation to what we can do. It's just more of giving us the information. A lot of times the lack of information is what limits us or slows down the process of getting you up and running again. Gotcha. So it's kind of a help me help you situation. Exactly. And just to kind of recap with the non-SEW gear motor, we're looking for environment, an overall picture, and then the necessary shaft and output speed and you said the motor voltage and I'm assuming maybe motor horsepower so we know how much yeah. oomph is going into that gearbox. That's right. That's right. All good things to have. Well, fantastic. Well, I think from that we could definitely get some gearbox replaced and keep our customers happy. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thanks for having me. Have a good one. Thank you, Jared.